What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in Korea mode but before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potential of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. So yes, in today's episode of Who to Sign For guys, we are going to take a look at Wolverhampton Wanderers of the Premier League in England. Now Wolves of course have had a very meteoric rise in recent seasons. It wasn't too long ago when they were playing championship football. Now if they can avoid an epic collapse against Espanyol in two nights Europa League, league fixture they'll be going through to the round of 16 in that competition and it seems like the only way is up right now for the Molyneux faithful. Now in the game they start off with a budget of around 50 to 52 million pounds after wage budget alteration and they start off with a four star team as well and their objectives in the first season domestically are very easy but in Europe it's quite tough. Domestically all you've got to do in the first season with Wolves is finish your mid table in the Premier League and reach the round of 16 in the FA Cup. So you get one round prior to the uh, round you enter in the FA Cup and um, and, and you've, you've already hit that objective and if you can finish your mid table which again is very easy for a team of Wolves' quality, you hit that objective too. The difficult objective is the European one. You have to reach the Europa League final in the first season in charge at Molyneux. And that's going to be very difficult to do. Now, of course, it is doable. They've got a very good size. I run you for the team here. They play a 5-2-3. And it's, it's a good side. There's some good quality in there. There's a lot of good young talent in here as well. You've got the likes of Ruben Vinegre. Uh, you've obviously got uh, the boys up top, Diego Jota as well. Uh, Ruben Neves, of course, such a fantastic young central midfielder. So there's quite a good lot of young talent here at Wolves. But to reach the Europa League final in your first season, you're, that's, that's going to be very, very difficult to do in the first season. It's, it's achievable, but it is going to be tough. So you're going to need some famous European knights at Molyneux if you're going to be able to hit all three of those objectives. So as I run you through the team here, again, as I alluded to a moment ago, there are quite a few good young talents here. Morgan Gibbs-White, uh, another one as well. Very good, young, talented English midfielder. But there are a few ageing players as well, such as the likes of John Ruddy, who has his deal at come the end of the year. Uh, Rui Patricio, their first-choice goalkeeper, is also in his 30s, and uh, so is João Moutinho, uh, their experienced Portuguese central midfielder as well. And they've got quite a few players, their deals come the end of the year. You might want to give new deals to Killiman, uh, the centre-back, and also Tyler Perry as well, the young central midfielder. Uh, both of these guys have mid to high 70 potential, so you might want to give them deals, but personally speaking, I'd probably let them go come the end of the season, unless you plan specifically to develop those talents, because the likelihood is they'll only ever be squad players for you, and probably won't be good enough when they're starting hitting their potential of getting anywhere close to your starting 11 or bench but as for selling players here with Wolves uh, you saw my transfer list there I definitely put John Ruddy on the transfer list he is now in his early mid, uh, early 30s and uh, on £24,000 a week sell him straight away his deals up come the end of the year whatever kind of fee you can get for Ruddy definitely sell him we've got £900,000 from RB Salzburg definitely sell him in the first season and look to bring in a younger backup goalkeeper who's also better as well as Ruddy is only 70 rated but as for new signings with this Wolves side the position position I'd recommend strengthening more than any other is the centre-back role. Now they've got some really good centre-backs here already such as Den Donka and also Connor Cody their captain as well but I would recommend a new centre-half and my number one target will be this man right here Joe Gomez of Liverpool. Very unrealistic signing but again as I mentioned earlier these signings aren't designed to be realistic. Gomez in the game is one of the best young centre-backs you can buy because he starts off 81 overall but at such a young age he grows to 89 overall so becomes one of the best centre-backs in the world when it's all said and done and with dynamic potential and player training you can get this guy into the 90s and one of the benefits to Gomez is that because Liverpool have one of the best centre-backs if not the best centre-back in the world in Virgil van Dijk and enough depth in that position Jurgen Klopp will never hold you to ransom over Joe Gomez you can always get him for around his valuation or just a little bit over it we pay 23 mil pounds plus a 10% sell-on clause which really in today's footballing world is absolutely nothing and Gomez signs a five-year 
£80,000 a week deal. He's really quick. He's got decent strength. Very technically solid on the ball for a young centre-half. So not bad at passing, but also very good defensive stats already. Uh, just 22 years old. He can also play right back as well. So you could possibly shift him to play right wing back if you need cover in that position. And Joe Gomes becomes our first signing. And again, he's my number one target for a Wolves career mode. Liverpool never seem to hold into a ransom in FIFA career mode. They never seem to make you pay 30 million plus. You can get him for around his valuation. 23 to 25 million, I'd say, is the most you should be paying for him. And again, he's one of the best young centre-backs you can buy. So yeah, Gomes is my first signing with Wolves. And we still have money to uh, work with after the signing of the Liverpool centre-back as well. And as I mentioned there a moment ago after the sale of John Ruddy, you'll want a backup goalkeeper for the experienced goalkeeper. And the player I'd look to replace Ruddy with is this guy right here. That's Aaron Ramsdale of Bournemouth. Ramsdale starts off 74 rated, so he's four ratings higher than John Ruddy to begin with. And he's also a whopping 11 years younger than Ruddy as well. So he's higher rated and he's younger. We paid 7.75 million to get him. So it might seem like a bit of a, an expensive transfer fee to sign the guy but he's only 21 years old he's got 84 potential as well so when it's all said and done he, he could be and should be good enough to replace Rui Patricio as your new starting number one uh, although of course he wouldn't wear number one due to um, Carl Aikime uh, his honour being uh, his uh, number being honoured by Rui Patricio who took number 11 when he first joined but uh, he could be number 13 or maybe number 11 when Rui Patricio retires who knows but uh, yeah he can be the replacement for Rui Patricio with 84 potential he's good enough to be better than the Portuguese goalkeeper when it's all said and done and the perfect understudy in the first season for your number 11. So yeah, Ramsdale is the player I'll pick up for a backup goalkeeper in this wall side. Him being English as well is always nice. You can develop him for club and country, which is a good name for a series. And also I'd recommend recalling some players from loan as well. I've discussed this in some other Who to Sign For episodes but when you join a club and you notice they've got players out on loan right now that have what I call resale value, I always recommend recalling those players and then selling them on for a transfer fee because right now they're not going to be doing anything for you whilst they're out on loan but in the case of Patrick Coutrone for example you can recall him and have him as a backup striker on the bench and as for the likes of Ryan Bennett at Leicester and Bonatini at Vittoria Guimaraes you can sell those guys for a transfer fee and raise a bit more cash into your budget that way. Uh, we also sold Romain Seiss, the uh, is he Moroccan? He's Moroccan centre back. Uh, he went to Lyon for I think it was eight million pounds in the end so yeah a bit more money there for our uh, and now fifth choice centre back after the signing of Joe Gomez. And we sold uh, Ryan Bennett here to Cagliari for 3.35 million. Again, this is why you recall those players. Bennett right now is doing nothing for you out on loan at Leicester. There's no benefit to him being loaned out to King Power Stadium. Because he's 29 years old, he's not going to get any better it's not like he needs first team football to develop so you might as well recall him, put him on the transfer list and get a few million for him you'll pay a small recall fee to get him back of around half a million but you'll make that back by selling him plus some profit on top as well so yeah we sell Bennett and as you'll see we also um, get rid of Bonatini as well uh, in the future too so again when you join a club and you notice they've got players out on loan I do recommend recalling them and looking to sell them or use them in your first team if they're good enough but uh, for my third signing with Wolves I decided to go after a new right wing back and I signed this guy from RB Leipzig who is one of the best young right backs you can buy in the game. It is Lucas Klostermann, the German uh, fullback who is really, really good. Um, I've said about this guy before he's six foot two and he's really versatile as well. You can play him right back or left back or with his range of stats, even though it's not listed in his positions he will be more than comfortable playing in the centre back role as well. I'm really big on this young man. He's got some great stats very versatile as well and we signed him for £21 million plus plus Bonatini, the striker who we recalled from Vittoria Guimaraes just a moment ago there. So it's a big fee to bring him in. But again, when you look at this guy's stats here, already 81 rated at just 23 years old. He can play right back, left back, and right wing back. So he can also play left wing back as well. But he's quick. He's got good stamina. Technically very comfortable. Really solid defensively as well. And again, with his range of stats and his height being six foot two, there's no reason why you couldn't play this guy as the right side of player in your back three. He could do any role in your back five. And that's why he's my number one target for a new wing back in this wall side. He's better than Matt Doherty right now. He's four years younger than Doherty as well. And again, he's got 85 potential as well. So he grows to become a very good right wing back when it's all said and done with dynamic potential too. He can get in to the high 80s as well. So Klosterman will be an amazing sign in there for 21.5 mil plus Bonatini. It's a lot of money to give up for him, but trust me, he's the best target out there for your right wing back role. And uh, if you can't get him, Hector Bayer is not a bad backup option, but I would personally recommend 
Lucas Klosterman. But uh, we did see that Ryan Bennett got sold. I was also trying to sell this guy right here, uh, Phil Ofosu Ayu, but I just could not get the guy out. Same with Rasmussen as well. You'll notice throughout the course of this episode, I was really trying hard to get these two right back slash right wing backs out on my side. The Danish 59 rated 21 year old and uh, Ofosu Aye as well. Every time the bids came in, I kept accepting them, but you will find sometimes when you join a new club, regardless of how hard you try, certain players just refuse to leave. That was the case with these two lads here. Just could not sell them for any kind of fee whatsoever. But uh, regardless, my fourth and final signing of the episode before the transfer window was this guy right here, Bubakari Samare of Lille. This is a 20-year-old French holding midfielder that is currently 75 rated. You can get the guy for around his valuation, which is £10 million. You'll notice in this year's FIFA career mode that some young players, you can sign them for their valuation so long as you include a small sell-on clause. That's what we did for the Lille midfielder here. It was his valuation £10 million plus a 8% sell-on clause, which really isn't that much and this guy starts off 75 rated and has got 87 potential as well so becomes one of the best central midfielders in the game when he's peaking and again with dynamic potential and player training you could possibly get this guy if you're lucky to 90 overall so Samari comes in and I'd definitely say this guy is your long-term successor for Jao Moutinho the Portuguese midfielder is now 32 years old so he's going to show signs of decline right from the very get-go in the first season but this guy and Morgan Gibbs White and Ruben Neves are a great trio of young midfielders you had, you now have at your disposal. Again, he's got the exciting prospect tag. He's six foot two. He's very well well rounded. This guy, but defensively, particularly very impressive indeed, and definitely a player to watch for the future as well. Just 20 years old, already 75 rated, and again in the first season, he's not going to be in your first 11, but for the future, he definitely will be. 87 potential. This guy is definitely going to be a star midfielder at your side at Molyneux for many years to come. So that was it for signings with Wolves. I spent basically every single penny on uh, making the signings here. I had no money left over whatsoever after making all these signings. And I just run you through the team here, as you can see. We bought two players for the first 11 in the back five, Klosterman and Joe Gomez, the right wing back and centre back, and two players for the bench as well in Aaron Ramsdale, the understudy for Rui Patricio, and of course, Sumare, who will learn under Jao Moutinho. So in the end, we sold three players, Bennett, Sice, and Ruddy for a combined total of 12.25 mil, and signed four players for 61.75 mils. So it was a massive net loss of almost 50 million pounds of Wolves in our first season. So not sure if we'll be getting investigated by the FFP for this. But either way, I would definitely say the business we did was really good as well. You know, we signed four great young talents there. Gomez with 89 potential, Sumario with 87, Klosterman has 85, and Ramsdale has 84. And we, saw, we sold some senior players, some aging players as well, who have very little future in this Wolves team from the first season onwards. The question was though, could this this youthful Wolf side managed to hit their objectives of finishing mid-table, reaching around a 16 in the FA Cup and reaching the Europa League final. Well, as you could see, we did hit our league objective very comfortably indeed. Finishing in mid-table in the first season is a very easy objective for Wolves. There's no doubt about that. This is a really good Wolf side and whilst the Premier League is quite competitive, there's no reason why you can't finish in the top 10 in your very first season. We finished in 8th place and we were just one point away from finishing in 7th, that final Europa League spot there, as Chelsea pipped us to it. But either way, we still finished in the top half and hit our Premier League objective there. So close to a 7th place finish for Wolves as well. As for the Carabao Cup, this doesn't count towards our objective, but I thought I'd show you where we got to. We were knocked out in the 4th round, of, uh, the round uh, by Manchester City, who beat us by 2 goals to nil. As for the FA Cup, we were asked to reach the around 16 of this competition as well and as you could see we managed to do that too we were knocked out in the fifth round which is the last 16 uh, by Leicester City so very happy with that and uh, I think I said earlier as well you know you need to go one round in the FA Cup to that objective you actually need to go two you go into the round of 64 so you need to go through two rounds to get that which we did regardless hit the round of 16 but as to the Europa League this was the one failure of the three we managed to finish in the semi-finals with Wolves in our first season knocked out by Porto who lost to Dortmund in the final as you see our path to the semi-finals here so we are one round away from reaching the Europa League final finishing in the final four but to be honest that's not even that bad Europa League semi-final for Wolves in their first year in Europe that's not bad whatsoever it might not have been the final but that's a very tough objective to it regardless semi-final I would say is still very impressive for Wolves so we might have technically failed that European objective but a semi-final place is still not bad whatsoever only one 
one round shy of the final. And I'd say in your first season, that's not bad at all. That's that's nitpicking if the board are going to complain about that. Semi-final is not bad whatsoever. But in the end, as you can see, I must say, I think we did a really good job in our first season with Wolves. We didn't have a massive transition with the side. Didn't colour load of players and sign like 10 new stars either. We just did things very gradually in our first season. And to be honest, that's all you need to do. This Wolves side already has some great young talents with the likes of Vinegray and Gibbs White and Diego Jota and so on and so forth. You don't need to bring in that many players in the first season. You just need to take things very gradually. Keep the band together for the most part. Don't sell any key members of your first team and just bring in a couple of decent young talents. That's what we did with the likes of Aaron Ramsdale who grew two ratings in the first season. Joe Gomez who also grew two ratings in the first season with 12 clean sheets in 36 Premier League games averaging one every three and growing to 83 rated. This guy is well on his path to 89 overall in the future. Uh, Klosterman coming in as well with 85 potential as you'll see our right wing back in the first season. He grew two ratings as well to 83 overall. So all three of the young talents here growing very nicely uh, in the first season for Wolves. Uh, Klosterman increases market valuation by 35% as well in his first season too, scoring two goals in his debut year in the Premier League. And Sumare grew by three ratings in the first season to 78 overall. So whilst in the first season he's unlikely to be in your starting 11, you'd still want to bleed him in, give him some match experience in cup games and midweek games if you will. He's growing three ratings and is well on his path to hitting 87 overall and replacing Jao Moutinho in one or or two seasons so yeah I, I must say this is a really successful first season for Wolves here you know again domestically hitting both those objectives finishing in eighth place one point away from a seventh place finish and also in the cup as well reaching the last 16 of the FA Cup as well yes again I will be honest Europa League was technically a failure going one round shy of the final but I think if you were to ask the Wolves fans this season if they would take a Europa League semi-final place I don't think too many will be disappointed with that a semi-final place in their first year back in Europe that's a that's a very, very impressive first season, I would say, in the Europa League. But that was today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys. So, a big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy today's episode and appreciate the transfer the tips, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.